put together a AMD Ryzen 3D printed gaming PC and you know one of the biggest comments that I got uh, when I built that machine uh, was A it was overwhelmingly positive. I had over a hundred thousand views on that video uh, or close to it um, but the main thing that everybody said was And you know, at the time, I thought that was kind of impossible. Uh, it just seemed like it would not work very well. But I'm proud to show you here my Axis 3D printed uh, Mini ITX case, which supports uh, full GPU, Flex ATX, sorry, full GPU, Flex ATX, and uh, it also features uh, customizable faceplates. The goal of this project was to be able to uh, print this on a three, uh, 300 millimeter print bed and also be able to print it in only three pieces. And the reason for that is it's just, you know, when you, a lot of these ITX cases, um, you're printing, you know, 10 pieces sometimes and that's really it's a lot of setup uh, where with this case you can actually set it to run it will print uh, it's about a four day print if you uh, use the settings I recommend on your 3d printer and depending on the speed of your printer um, but it turned out really well now this is still my prototype case I still need to do um, one more print I need to use I want to use a higher more durable material than this uh, but in general I feel like this is good enough to uh, show off uh, this is fully working uh, be sure to subscribe if you want to see some videos of the performance and temps that I'm getting in this case as that will be uh, handled in a follow-up video but uh, I'm pretty pleased with it it's uh, it's really a nice looking case it feels very solid. Um, I love the replaceable front panel that I've done on this uh, that lets you easily change. And the way that this goes together is you have a solid single piece, and when the front pops off, uh, you're able to access all the components, and this top lid also comes off. So uh, we'll get into uh, some of the uh, CAD files and I'll show you some of the design features that we, I've put into place on this case. Okay, so let me walk you through uh, this little case here. So like I mentioned, uh, we're really looking at three pieces. The main component piece here uh, is set up to accept uh, Flex ATX down here and I believe that uh, the cutout here probably will fit most Flex ATX. Uh, I'll go through the components I actually used. Um, I used a Silverstone FX350G for my build and that definitely fits this exactly right. Um, over here we have the PCI brackets and you'll notice uh, if we peek into the inside of this case that there's actually uh, let me get over there there's actually uh, some holes right here that you can kind of make out sorry this is not the best there we go this gap here allows the bottom bracket of the PCI to, to settle in there 
to hold the bottom in place um, and also you do have your screw holes at the top um, I'll be beveling this out a little bit to make room uh, for the screw head so far I've only needed to use that one screw and that's held it just fine uh, so that's an adjustment there's still just a few tiny adjustments that I will be making uh, before I release this to the public and when I do release this I will put it in the description of this video so you can download and print it for yourself or modify it or do whatever you want to do so if we look at this uh, pattern on the side uh, there's some really cool things that I'll end up doing in this case uh, that uh, you could probably could only do in a 3D printed case. For example, uh, here we have the legs of the case and they are this shape for a few reasons. A, it's just uh, kind of a nice looking shape, but also it's easy to print without having to use uh, supports that have to break off and make the print look ugly. So by doing this gradual taper, we're able to get the legs to lift the case off the ground. Um, but also it's printed that way for support. And we'll use that technique a few times here, uh, particularly for these standoffs where the screw holes go in to tap everything in. Um, so over here, uh, just to do more of a brief overview, obviously this is the GPU bay uh, on the lower section. And this open front allows you to, to uh, slide that GPU right in there. Uh, there's no need to have every panel come off. Uh, I see a lot of 3D prints that do that. But this is all done in one piece uh, for the most part. And then this red piece right here, uh, actually if you turn it 90 degrees, it lines up and there are grooves in the case. So when you uh, drop, and they're in three places to hold it down flush really nicely, there's one there in the middle, and then another on this side. And that ends up holding it in place uh, really nicely, and that uh, holds all the, your cabling in place. And then obviously this top piece has four screw holes that to line up and you place the lid on top and you're closed and good to go and I'll show you that in real life but uh, one of the, the the coolest things about this case is the fact that uh, the motherboard piece you know if you had to print a motherboard um, section and print the entire base of it uh, that would be a lot of supports and a lot of wasted uh, material. But what I was able to do is leverage uh, the casing of the power supply itself. The power supply is rigid, right? So uh, it actually gets encased in the in the uh, plastics uh, when it slides into there, which lets you uh, take advantage of the uh, rigidity of that power supply. Uh, and then give uh, basically strength to be able to hold the motherboard on top and it would hold up just fine even without the power supply there but uh, you definitely why not leverage that that inherent strength of the metal and that allows you to then screw in the motherboard on top of the other components and uh, really allows you to get everything in there in a pretty compact package and also every all the shapes that are used for venting are oriented the way they are in order to facilitate 3d printing uh, so you don't need supports for those pieces uh, another cool thing that uh, i did here with this case is you can see there's a 92 millimeter fan uh, opening right here and after you have the video card in place and it is pushed in it leaves room for that fan and there's actually a little notch there uh, to push the fan up into the case just slightly that helps you a put the screw holes in uh, but also gives you just a little bit more clearance if you need it uh, and then we have our power button insert or, or yeah uh, cut out right there and then there are some brackets here uh, to to drill in a PCI extension bracket but 
Uh, I actually didn't even screw those in because I found that by the time you have the graphics card notched in down there, screwed in up here, uh, flush against the wall with the cables in, it was not going anywhere um, and didn't really need that PCIe bracket to, to be drilled into anything. It just rests up against it and it is perfectly solid. All right, so just to recap, uh, this is just part one of a few videos I'll do regarding this case. It's not the first case, it's been 3D printed with a GPU in it, but I think the design is pretty cool and I'll be showing you what components I put in this and how I built it uh, from the ground up in terms of assembly in the next video, as well as uh, we'll get into some performance metrics, uh, how hot it gets, uh, what the temps are, what performance you can get out of this machine, and we'll cover that, so be sure to subscribe. And uh, thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you on the next one.